اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلاة و سلام على سیدنا محمد و آله الطیبین الطاهرین Dear audience, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our session dealing with the literary and artistic techniques in the Quran. This is session four of a series of 30 or, or 31 sessions. Today, inshallah, in this session, I will talk about three uh, subjects interrelated to one another one is suluk of the quran in one's body and soul and suluk means passing through i will explain it and the second topic is concept and background of phonosemantic of the quran or phonosemantics of the quran and the third one immediately related related to this is meaning and the goal of for the semantic of the Quran. Of course, I will inshallah talk about the inner music of the Quran as well. Now the first uh, topic of today's session is uh, suluk of the Quran in one's body and soul. The, in the Quran we recite uh, you know, derivatives of the term suluk. For instance, in Surah Ash-Shu'ara, that is chapter number 26, in verses 200 and 201, we recite, fi mujrimin. This is how we let it pass through the hearts of the guilty, this suluk is used here. Salaknahu. La yu'minuna bihi hatta yara wal adhab al alim. They do not believe in it until they sight the painful punishment. Elsewhere in Surah Hajr, verse number uh, 12 of this chapter, that is chapter 15, we recite, Kadalika nasulukuhu fi qulub al mujrimin. That is how we let it pass through the hearts of the guilty. لا يؤمنون به وقد خلت سنة الأولين. They do not believe in it and the precedent of the ancients has already passed. The Quran passed through the hearts of the guilty but did not influence them. It is hoped that it will not be the same for your hearts. When the Quran um, mentions and or to say, cites that and mentions that uh, we have passed the Quran through the hearts of the guilty, but uh, to no avail because their uh, heart were not their hearts were not capable of receiving the effects and impacts of the Quran. So beware of your own hearts. Uh, so that it may remain healthy in the way that receives the impacts and influences of the Quran. And uh, the same term is used about the honeybee in Surah An-Nahl. وَأَوْحَوْ رَبُّكَ إِلَى النَّحْلَ أَنِ اتَّخِذِي مِنَ الْجِبَالِ بُيُوتًا وَمِنَ الشَّجَرِ وَمِمَّا يَعْرِشُونَ ثُمَّ كُلِي مِنْ كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ فَسْلُكِي سُبُلَ رَبِّكِ الذُّلُلَ Here, the same term is used. A derivative of suluk, fasluki. Means, and your Lord inspired the honeybee, saying, make your home in the mountains and on the trees and the uh, trellises that they erect. Then eat from every kind of fruit and follow meekly the ways of your Lord. Of course, here, suluk, Fasluki means follow meekly, although have the same root of suluk in the previous verses that I already have recited. This is Surah An-Nahl, that is chapter number 16, verses 68 and 69. The Quran passes through the ways of the body. 
What are these ways? These ways are that is the include include the orifices like the ear and the skin. Yes, the skin. External apparent orifices that is the ear and the concealed ways of the depth of the corners of the soul that is an a spiritual aspect of way that the Quran enters one's soul. So look of the Quran through one's body and soul has important vital impacts and influences among which mention can be made of tranquility and calmness of heart. Another aspect of this suluk can be seen in this verse, although the term suluk is not used, but what the meaning and the concept is available. Allahu nazzala ahsan al hadith kitab an mutashabiha mathaniya taqshairu minhu juludu al ladhina yakshawna rabbahum thumma talinu juluduhum wa quloobuhum ila dhikri allahi ذَلِكَ هُدَى اللَّهِ يَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُضْلِ لِلَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَادٍ This is Surah Zumar, that is chapter number 39, verse number 23. Allah has sent down the best of discourses, a scripture composed of similar motifs, whereat quiver the skins of those who fear their Lord. Here you see the quiver of the skin. This quivering of the skin is the influence of passing the Quran through the personality or the soul of the people. Then their skins and hearts soften to Allah's remembrance. After this passing through, through the skin, the Hearts and their skins softens to Allah's remembrance. That is Allah's guidance by which He guides whomever He wishes and whomever Allah leads astray has no guide. That is Allah's guidance by which He guides whomever He wishes and whomever Allah leads astray has no guide. In this verse, dear audience, brothers and sisters in Islam, the influence of the melody of the Quran in the heart, through different parts of the body, including the skin, and its direct effect and influence, as well as its physical and kinetic um, stimulations have been mentioned. Today, the scientists, after long researches and examinations, have noticed the role of the skin in transmitting the sound into the body. Well, I make myself content with this amount to explain the first topic of today's discussion. Now, let us uh, go ahead to the second topic that is phonosemantic of the Quran. Uh, what does it mean? It means a melody that is created out of a wise arrangement of letters which gives the speech and eloquence and fluency and makes relationship between the speech and the meaning. This is the phonosemantic of the Quran. First, let me talk about the background of phonosemantic. Among the writers and authors who have compiled books in this field, mentions can be made of four personalities. Two of them are Egyptian and two of them are Iranians. The Egyptian writers in this regard are Sayyid Muhammad Qutb and Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud. And the two Iranians, Iranian scholars that have written something in this regard 
I should mention Ayatollah Sayyid Mahmoud Talaqani. May his soul rest in peace. As well as Ayatollah Muhammad Hadi Ma'arifat. May his soul rest in peace as well. Regarding Sayyid Qutb also he has passed away. May his soul rest in peace. About those, Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud, I'm not sure. Well, what is the purpose and goal of phonosemantic? To consider the Quran as an audio phenomenon and not, and to acquire all effects may accrue. The purpose and the goal of phonosemantic First of all is to consider the Quran as an audio phenomenon and not just a written phenomenon. Its audio, its you know, sound and melody has a great, great importance on the audience. Well, it should be noted that in our institutes, and research centers, the Quran is considered as a written work and not an audio entity. And it's a pity. This approach may be an obstacle on the way of clear comprehension of the words of revelation. But rather, reflection in the Quran is to a great extent based on the principle of association of the words and contexts and it is to some extent dependent on this audio reception of the Holy Quran and the impression of its words and phrases in our audio and not visual memory. Studying the phonosemantic of the Quran can be an answer to certain questions. Uh, two questions in particular. First of all, how can one hear today the word of the Quran in a more eloquent way? And the second question is, how can one achieve the relationship between the word and its meaning, at least in some cases in the Quran that is that this fact is clearer so that he may apply them practice in better hearing of the Quran. Let me explain the general impacts of the speech in an ordinary way and not the way particular to the musicians. As same as the personalities that I have mentioned, the four personalities did not investigate this subject professionally. There is a capability called Ishraq Lafzi. Ishraq Lafzi. Literal intuition. Ishraq Lafzi. Intuition that rises, arises from the word, which is an external indication of the textual beauty and is spread because of its relationship with the element of ring and melody in the beauty. If the ring is adjusted in the sonic units, then it will take the rhythmic shape and can be rhymed, can be homogeneous, can be rhyming proses or rhyming sets of prose, can be balanced and rhythmic. These levels comprise a vast range of literary texts, literary texts including verse and prose. The phonosemantic is more obviously and easily found in the surahs revealed in Mecca, the short surahs. However, it can be found in the entire Quran, including the long surahs revealed in Medina. It means that a distinct and excellent melody and rhythm exist in the whole Quran, especially the short surahs, 
I mean the ones that were revealed in Mecca before Hegira. Regarding the inner music of the Quran, now that I talked about phonosemantic, the now uh, let me talk about the inner music of the Quran. It is a very interesting discussion, subject of discussion. Mustafa Mahmoud says, one of the four compilers in this regard, the inner music of the Quran is among most profound mysteries in the Quranic combinations. The Quran is neither poetry nor prose nor a rhymed speech only. Rather, it is a special architecture, as he says, of words, denoting its inner music, and there exists a big difference between this apparent and external music and the, and the inner one. When I read an outstanding poem, he says, he continues, Mustafa Mahmoud continues, when I read an outstanding poem of an Arab poet, I will rejoice and go into ecstasies. But I hear its music externally, I mean through the rhyme, meter, and so on. But when you recite the Quran, especially this uh, these verses of Surat Ad-Duha Wad-Duha Wal-Layli Idha Saja Ma Wadda'aka Rabbuka Wa Ma Qala You face a unit that apparently is void of rhyme and meter and divisions. However, you can trace music in all of its sides. But from where and how? It cannot be properly described. This is the same inner music of it. It is a mystery of the Quranic architecture and no literary combinations participate it. You see, Quran is a miracle and its miracle cannot be uh, described properly, but it is a miracle and it has the beauty that absorbs and attracts the ears and the hearts because of its inner music. Another personality that has uh, compiled some works in this regard is Sayyid Muhammad Qutb, the Egyptian author. He says, such a melody is the result of a special systematization and coordination of the letters in a single word in a single word as well as the harmony in a rhymed prose and from this aspect the quran has the characteristics of both verse and prose although it is neither verse nor is it prose with this superiority to both of them that the rhetoric in the Quran is free of the limitations and restrictions of rhyme. You see their audience, the poem, the poetry is very restricted to the rhymes and the verse is restricted to the rhymes to some extent. But the Quran that, that has the advantages of both of them is not restricted in rhymes and, and meter. And at the same time, it has taken the inner music of the poetry and has created rhyme prose that is considered as a type of meter. Say the quote continues, when the Quran is being recited, its inner rhythm and melody is fully sensed and felt. This melody is clearer in short surahs in which the rhyme prose are closer to one another, also in the depictions and descriptions. An example. In the surah of An-Najm, that is chapter number 
53 of the Quran, from the first verse of the surah to verse number 22, this string of or sets of verses uh, we recite and we enjoy. And the surah continues, goes ahead until it reaches to Till In order to save the time, I ignore and omit the translation of this surah, uh, these, the verses of this surah. These rhymed set of prose has almost equal meters but not based on Arabic prosody and arud. And the rhyme has been applied in them. In addition to these clear external features, there exist other features that are not obvious. Say the Qutb continues and adds, but rather they are internal and create a musical rhythm by causing harmony and coordination among letters of words. This feature, because of internal feeling and the musical sense, makes difference occur between one rhythm, one rhythm and another. Even if the rhymed set of prose and the meters are equal. Here, the phonosemantic, which follows the musical system of the sentence, is neither short nor long. Rather, it has a medium length and based on the final characters of the rhyme, has gained a serial, story-like atmosphere. All these features can be felt and sensed and are more manifest in some cases of rhymed prose. For instance, in the verses, If, instead of this revealed Quranic verse, one recites this way, Then the rhyme will be lost. You know, a single word was omitted and the rhyme was lost. And the ring or melody will be damaged. Also, if one recites, Here again, the one word is omitted and everything is damaged and is ruined. The meter will be disturbed in this case. Also in the verse, this is one example, another example, أَلَكُمُ الذَّكَرَ وَلَهُ الْأُنْثَى تِلْكَ إِذَنْ قِسْمَةٌ ذِيزَ This is the revealed verses. But if the word إِذَنْ is omitted, that is, if one recites أَلَكُمُ الذَّكَرَ وَلَهُ الْأُنْثَى تِلْكَ قِسْمَةٌ ذِيزَ Then the melody of the sentence that gain consistency by this word will be disturbed. It does not mean that the above mentioned words are redundant words. Never, never. They are not redundant words. They are not used to fill the blanks of meter or rhyme. Never. On the contrary, they convey meanings. I mean, even the two words that I have omitted, that is, say, the Qutb omit, omitted it. it. I'm, you know, reciting, I am citing and quoting, say, the Qutb's words here. Um, those words conveyed meanings, and uh, omission and absence of them damages and harms the meaning. This is another technical meaning of the Quran that makes wor a word necessary both to convey the meaning 
and to give consistency to the melody and the rhythm. Both these tasks are done in the same level without there be a priority to each side. If a word that is used in the Quran in a particular shape, this is another case related to our discussion. If a word that is used in the Quran in a particular shape is replaced with its regular shape, or the wording of a verse is changed. For instance, a word is misplaced. Nothing is lost, nothing is omitted, but just misplacement is uh, done. Then the phonosemantic will be disturbed. As an example, I uh, will give you this, this example and we'll uh, end the discussion of today's session. All in Surah of uh, Shu'ara, that is chapter 26, verses 75 to 82. أَنْتُمْ وَآبَاؤُكُمُ الْأَقْدَمُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ عَدُوٌ لِي إِلَّا رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ Please pay attention. أَلَّذِي خَلَقَنِي فَهُوَ يَهْدِينَ وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمُنِي وَيَسْقِينَ وَإِذَا مَرَضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ وَالَّذِي يُمِيتُنِي ثُمَّ يُحْيِينَ وَالَّذِي أَطْمَعُ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينَ Here, يَاءُ المتكلم That is objective pronoun of the first person singular. The letter the, um, you know, a single letter word that is ye, with which some of the verbs of these verses are ended, has been omitted so that the rhyme is kept. The rhyme, um, you know, matching with Yawmaddin from Rabbal Alameen to Yawmaddin. Rabb al-Alamin is the third verse, and Yawm al-Din is the 22nd verse of this series. And the words from which the objective pronoun Ya al-Mutakallam are uh, omitted, but there, is, there are indications that they are omitted, and the, the Arabs can understand this, are Yahdin, Yasqeen, Yashfeen, and Yuhyeen. Instead of Yahdini, Yasqeeni, Yashfeeni, and Yuhyeeni, the Quran has used the, the special shape of these verbs in which the ending objective pronoun are missing and are omitted. An instance for the second case is the story of Zachariah in the Surah of Maryam, chapter 19, verses 2 to 4. ذِكْرُ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكَ عَبْدَهُ زَكَرِيَّ إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيَّ قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبَ وَلَمْ أَكُنْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيَّ I would like to concentrate on and put emphasis on this part of the verse, Rabbi inni wahana al-'alamu minni. If the word minni precedes the word al-'alam, this way, Rabbi inni wahana minni al-'alam, instead of Rabbi inni wahana al-'alamu minni, then it may be felt that the meter is broken. And the melody is not kept. Thus, the inner music of the Quran accompanies its statements and creates metrical and rhythmical words with high sensitiveness that may be disturbed with the slightest manipulation and replacement. Although, these words are not poem and do not have its restrictions. This is the end of Sayyid Qutb's quotation. Well, uh, 
I uh, think that it is better to stop the discussion at this very point and I request their audience to follow the discussion in the written uh, literatures that are uh, available for them. Thank you very much for listening to me and staying with me. May Allah bless you all and support you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.